Copying formulas in Excel is extremely useful. Once written, a formula can be copied into thousands of cells in a single second, and the correct values will be automatically calculated in each of them. Understanding and mastering relative and absolute references is essential when working with Excel. Example 1. In this example, we are going to recalculate the revenue values from three stores and ten products from Euro to US dollars. The revenue values in US dollars should be in cells with green backgrounds. We'll input a conversion formula for the first product in the first store, sales divided by the 2018 US dollars exchange rate. Writing the formula in this way will calculate the correct value in US dollars for the sales of the first product in the first store. When we copy it one cell down, it will refer to product 2, which is a valid reference, but the cell that the formula takes the exchange rate from will also move one cell down. The copied formula states the error, divide by 0, because the formula is referring to cell J5, which is empty, which means its value is 0. Similarly, if we copy this formula to the right, the value of the sales is properly taken, product 1 in store 2, but the address that the formula takes the exchange rate from changes to K4 which again is empty and the error symbol is shown. Additionally, error warning icons and the autofill options icon may appear, depending on Excel's settings. At this point in the course, I suggest ignoring them. Delete the incorrect formulas from cells G4 and F5. We should change our formula so that the references to cells with sales values change with the copying of the formula, but at the same time, the address of the cell with the exchange rate remains consistent. To do this, double-click on cell F4 to edit the formula that is in it. Set the flashing cursor, which is a small vertical flashing line, before, after, or in the middle of the J4 reference, and press the F4 key on the keyboard. Pressing the F4 key adds the dollar signs to the cell's address. They mean that the reference will not change during copying. The dollar sign in front of the letter means the column will remain unchanged when the formula is copied. Similarly, the dollar sign before the row number causes the number to remain the same regardless of where the formula is copied. Please note that dollar signs are used to block references in all cases, and the fact that we are converting euro to dollars in these examples has no connection with the dollar sign. During Excel training, I often hear the question, are the dollar signs because we are converting to dollars? Definitely not. We can copy the formula prepared this way into all the green fields of the table. It's best to copy the right one first, then double click on the blank square. All the formulas now take their data from the appropriate cells, the sales in euro and the same US dollars exchange rate in cell J4, written in the formula as dollar sign J dollar sign 4. The dollar sign can also be entered by placing the cursor in the correct place, holding down the shift key and pressing the number 4, but using the F4 key, especially after getting some practice, will greatly speed up your work. Pressing the F4 key several times enters various combinations of dollar signs in and around the cell's address. Pressing the F4 key once adds a dollar sign to the row and the column. Dollar sign J, dollar sign 4. Pressing F4 twice only adds the dollar sign to the row. J, dollar sign 4. Pressing F4 thrice only adds the dollar sign to the column. Dollar sign J4. Pressing F4 four times restores the original address without dollar signs. After that, the process starts again from the beginning. An address with dollar signs is called absolute because it will always refer to the same row and column, whereas an address without these symbols is called relative because it changes during copying. Example 2. In this example, we are going to work on the table with sales in euro for 10 products and for 3 of the years, we would like to convert the sales into US dollars. In each of these three years, the dollar to euro exchange rate was different. The exchange rates are in the table on the right. Our task is to convert the sales in euro into US dollars using only one formula, which we can copy into the whole green area of the table containing the sales. To start, we'll input a formula that divides the sales of product 1 in 2017 by the US dollars to euro exchange rate from 2017. From the previous example, we already know that due to the use of relative addresses, without dollar signs, a formula like this cannot be copied into the entire table. The euro exchange rates are in cells J17, K17 and L17. Therefore, they are all in row 17, but have different columns. 
Because we need the formula to take the exchange rate from the correct column, we can't put a dollar sign in front of the column letter. The years in the tables with sales are in exactly the same order as the years in the table of exchange rates. In other words, when we copy the formula to the right, the reference that the exchange rate is taken from should also move to the right, and at the same time, when copying the formula downwards, the address should not move down, because there are empty cells under the exchange rates and the formula would give us the dividing by zero error. To prevent the reference from changing rows, we have to put a dollar sign before the row number, and because we want the reference to change to the right, we don't put a dollar sign in front of the column letter. The dollar sign blocks only what is directly after it, so in the address j$17, only the row is blocked. The dollar sign in this case has no effect on the column. Now we can copy the formula for the entire table. After copying, it's a good idea to check one or two examples to see whether the formulas are taking data from the right cells. We can do this by double clicking on one of the cells. As you can see, the cells that the formula refers to are marked with coloured borders. In order to perform a task like this using only one formula, the table with sales data and the table with the exchange rates must have the same layout. In this example, both the sales and the rates were set horizontally. If their arrangement were different, it wouldn't be possible to apply one formula to all of the fields. Example 3. In this example, we need to convert the sales values for three stores from three years from Euro into US dollars. The years are set vertically this time, and the exchange rates in the table next to them have the same layout. The exchange rate cells have the same column, but different rows. We don't want the column to change when copying the formula to the right, because the reference would change from column K to columns L and M, which are empty. However, we want the number of the row to change, and for the sales to use the exchange rates for the relevant year. In the formula, in the reference to the exchange rate, put a dollar sign in front of the letter K. Now we can copy the formula for the entire table. Example 4. In columns C and D, we have the sales data for 10 brands. In column E, we'll count what the percentage increase or decrease of the sales was when compared to the previous year. We'll do this for each individual brand and then for the brands as a whole. Before calculating the sales increase, we'll summarise sales in 2018 and 2019. The fastest way is to use the ALT equals keyboard shortcut. When summarising the values, we must be careful not to add the year in the header of the sales results. To calculate the percentage change, the new value should be divided by the old value, and then 1 is subtracted from the result. Equals new value divided by old value minus 1. In our example, it looks like equals d5 slash c5 minus 1. This formula does not need dollar signs because both of the references should change when we copy them downwards. The formula for the percentage share is the sales value of the brand divided by the total sales. And in our example, it looks like equals c5 slash c dollar sign 15. In the address c dollar sign 15, we use the dollar sign, which means the formulas for the following brands will also use the data from c15 and not from the empty cells below. We'll copy the formula into the entire share 2018 and share 2019 columns. To calculate incremental sales, simply subtract the 2018 sales value from the 2019 sales value. Don't use the dollar sign here because for each brand the data should be taken from the cells in the corresponding rows. The formula equals D5 minus C5 can be copied into the cells below. The sales values here are in US dollars. In the last column of this table, we need to calculate the increase in Euro. The exchange rate is in cell H2, and because each cell calculating the increase in Euro should refer to H2, this address cannot change when copying downwards. Therefore, put a dollar sign before the 2 in the reference, and then copy the formula. If you see the same result in your exercise file as you can here, Consider this example done. Example 5. Doing the exercises will help you to become a proficient user of relative and absolute references. You can stop the video when I tell you to and solve the examples yourself, then continue watching if you finish them or give up. In the example with the multiplication table, the multiplication formula is already inputted. You only need to add the dollar signs so that the formula can be copied across the entire table. 
Remember that we only enter dollar signs before the parts of the references that we do not want to change when copying. This task is commonly used in job interview tests, so good luck. Please stop the video now to see how much you have learnt doing this exercise by yourself. And the solution is... Example 6. In the chessboard example, the ampersand symbol is used. It joins texts and means that cell N17's information about the chessboard field is displayed. Before copying this formula into the other fields, remember to put the appropriate dollar signs in the formula. In order to not spoil the formatting of the chessboard, the formula should be copied by right-clicking. Good luck! After solving this example, it could be worth comparing the solution with the solutions of example 5, the multiplication table. Please stop the video now to see how much you have learnt doing this exercise by yourself. And the solution is... Examples 7, 8 and 9. In these examples, in order to better your relative and absolute cell references skills, I suggest converting the values in Euro into US dollars. These examples differ from those we started the lesson with. You should choose which exchange rates table, vertical or horizontal, should be used yourself. Choose without looking at the cell references 1, 2 and 3 worksheets. Good luck! Thank you for watching lesson 19 of the Excel for Beginners course. You have almost completed this course. If you haven't already, I recommend you watch all the lessons from the Excel for Beginners and then the Advanced Excel lessons and check your skills by doing the Excel job interview tests which are at the end of the Advanced Excel course. The next lesson, Working with Many Spreadsheets, is the last lesson of this course.